In this video, I'm going to share a place the fuel pump assembly on this Ford F-350 with the 7.3 Power Stroke engine. This matters because the fuel tanks are different, so make sure you have the right one. Let's get started. We're going to have to drop this shield down first, so let's support it from underneath. Just put a little bit of pressure on it with whatever support you have available, just so that when we unbolt it, it doesn't fall down. On the frame side, you'll see two 10 millimeter headed bolts towards the front of the tank, or the shield. Remove them both. Further back, same two 10 millimeter headed bolts. Remove these as well. On the other side, right above the drive shaft, you'll see the same 10 millimeter bolt. On this strap of the fuel tank shield, there is just one. Further back, there are two on this strap. Carefully lower the shield and remove it. Now bring your support back up onto the fuel tank. Put a little bit of pressure so we can release the straps. The fuel tank straps have 13 millimeter bolts. There's four in total, one on each end of every strap. So let's take them all out, starting with this one right here at the back. On to the next one at the front of the tank. Although these straps are supposed to swivel right here on this pin on the frame side, I'm just going to unbolt them because they do have a plate that goes across, connects both of them, and the way I have my tank supported, I won't be able to swivel them out of the way. 13 millimeter headed bolts on this side as well. You can access the rear strap from on top of this leaf spring mounting point. The 13 millimeter headed bolt is right through here. There we go. Lower the tank a little bit. All right. With the tank lowered a tiny bit, we can now remove the fuel filler neck hose and this one right here. So let's start by undoing all the clamps. You can use an eight millimeter socket and loosen them all up. They just need to be loosened up, not removed or anything. Separate these. If needed, lower the fuel tank a little bit more. There we go, that's gonna help pull on these hoses. There's one. There we go. Above this fuel tank, if you follow the wiring harness for the fuel pump, you'll see it right here on the frame. Just press on that tab and disconnect it. All right, there it is. Set that aside. Now these two fuel lines, we're gonna have to lift up on these retaining clips and lift them out of the fuel line and unhook them. And now you need a fuel line disconnect tool. That'll go in here, open up the uh, little prongs inside, pop the fuel line out. Before I remove these fuel lines, I'm gonna spray some brake parts cleaner where it connects to get all of the sand and debris out of there. And now I'm gonna use a 3 8 adapter. That's the size of the line. Press the line in on the fitting, stick the adapter in, and then wiggle it all out. There we go, once that adapter clicks in there, or the, the tool I should say, you should be able to remove the line. I'm gonna stick an absorbent pad underneath to absorb any diesel that might leak out. There we go. And we'll do the same on the other line. This line is a 5 16, not a 3 8 anymore. Okay. Take this out. Now we can continue lowering our tank all the way down. Okay. 
Now this fuel pump is held on with this lock ring and you do need a special tool for this that goes right around it. I'm gonna have to adjust this a little bit so it can fit. And what you do is you clamp onto it and then spin it and unthread it off of the fuel pump. There it goes. Constant pressure does the trick and of course we have to reposition now. This ring being plastic, you wanna make sure that you don't actually damage it. Take this off. At this point, if you have a lot of debris here, hold the pump down and blow it all off. Lift it up, and there it is. Just wait for all this fuel to drip out. Okay, take this out, reinstall the pump. Make sure it's facing the same way. Get that gasket seated. And to make sure it's facing the same way, there's two tabs that will line up. If they don't line up and the pump doesn't fall in place, it is not facing the right orientation. Get the ring over. Line it up with the threads. Start threading it on. Once you got it started, Take your tool and finish tightening it up. Put a ratchet or a small breaker bar on this and just pull it tight. All right, once you got this snug down, you should be good to go. Lift up the fuel tank, push the filler neck hoses out of the way so they can clear the frame. Make sure this wire for the fuel pump doesn't get caught as well as anything else, really all other wires and lines, hoses, whatever else runs along the frame. Let's reconnect the fuel lines. Reconnect these two fuel lines. No special tools required for this. Just slide them on until they click. If you pull on them, they should be completely locked in. Same with this one. One's the feed, one's the return. It is very important that you make sure they're actually locked in. As you can see, this one was not. There we go. That locked in, perfect. And now you want to lock them in with these, with these hooks. Hook them into the line and then pop it down. Do this to both. Take the fuel pump connector. I'm actually going to run it underneath these lines here so it can loop around and not hang where it can get caught or pinched. Plug it back in. All right, that clicked. The harness is still secured on here, so I'm not worried about it. Now we can bring the tank up the rest of the way. As you raise the fuel tank, make sure the filler neck reconnects. Connect the filler neck on the two hoses. There we go, there's one. Once you connect that one, it should stay in place. And connect the second one all the way in until it bottoms out. Tighten up the two clamps. As always with this type of clamp, you want to make sure you don't over tighten it because it does strip out eventually. So just make it snug and stop right there as soon as it starts squishing the hose a little bit. If you can't twist the hose, it's plenty tight. Make sure this is bottomed out and bring this clamp over. Tighten this one as well. All right, put in the rear strap, slide it up into position, line up this bolt. This one's more difficult to see, but once you get it started into the threads, you should be able to easily tighten it up. This one we can tighten up now because this pivots on a hinge, so no matter what you do to the bolt, the strap can still move around. Snug it up. The torque on all four of these fuel tank strap mounting bolts, the 13 millimeter headed ones, is 30 foot pounds. All right. Install the front strap. On the other side, you may need a pry bar to push the strap in place. All right, you're gonna have to do a pry and Spin at the same time, get that nice and snug. 30 foot pounds on this one as well. 
And let's do the same thing in the back. Make that nice and snug. And once you got that one in and tight, 30 foot pounds on this one as well. Now let's bring up the shield. Once you get it close, start lining up the bolts. Once you have it lined up, start the bolts in. I recommend starting them all before you tighten any of them, just so you can make sure that they're actually lined up. There we go, start in the two rear bolts. Once you have them all in, snug them up. Give them about an eighth to a quarter turn after they bottom out. Now the ones on the frame side, snug these up as well. If you're doing this by hand, just like the other ones, between an eighth and a quarter turn after they bottom out. Last one over here. Make sure that's snug as well. Remove the support that you used. To prime the fuel system and bleed any air out of it, all you have to do on this truck is cycle the key to the on position or to the run position, and then wait about 30 seconds. The lift pump, which is in the tank, will pump fuel to the fuel filter and the high pressure pump. There is a return line though, and any air will just go into the tank through that return line. Do this several times, and then you should be good to go. If you listen closely, you can hear air rushing through the fuel filter bowl, if there is any, as this cycles. Here we go. After a little bit of time, you will hear an audible click inside the cab. That's the fuel pump relay shutting the fuel pump off. That was it right there. I'm gonna do this one more time and then start it. Awesome, check for leaks, and other than that, take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.